What's up you guys? It's your girl Angela. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Hey, hello. So basically today's video is going to be me giving advice to my 3 old self. So I know many of you have recently passed the bar. Congratulations. That's literally the best feeling in the world, okay? So you know, you be proud of yourself and make sure you celebrate. But I know after the excitement of the bar, a lot of you guys are going to be, you know, looking for jobs or starting your job, or maybe you've already started. And so upon seeing everybody, you know, passing the bar and stuff, I just started thinking about myself and my mind state when I passed the bar. And after that excitement died down, I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> so now I have to practice law. Now I'm going to be an attorney and I don't know a thing about what I'm going to be doing. So I've already kind of done a video on just overall advice to new lawyers and I'll link that up here so you guys can check it out. But this video is going to be a little bit more personal to me and just the advice I would have gave myself based on the thoughts and doubts and just anxiety that was running through my mind. And just given the law school experience, I can't imagine that it won't be relatable to many of you, if not all of you. And some of this is based on when I was a 3L or maybe just, you know, a first first year or second year. If you guys have been following my channel for a little while, you guys already know I've done some transitions early within my legal career. Like I said, this is my fifth year and I've been at different firms. I've switched my type of practice. And so, yeah, so you'll kind of get that feel throughout the, the video. So yeah, I just wanted to give that background just because some of these things will be very relevant and specific to my experience with moving around and changing practice areas very early in my career and I'm still early in my career, right? Okay, so the first one is, Angela, you will get work, you guys. When you start at a law firm, especially on the transactional side, I mean, that's the only, that's the only experience I know. So that's the only thing I can really speak to, but it can be really hard to get in the groove, okay? It's really hard to kind of bring somebody in who's new, has never done anything, especially if you're kind of full swings into transactions. And so very early on in my career, I was very concerned, always concerned about where my next work source would come from. You know, I'd get an assignment, be so excited, work on it, but then be looking for my next assignment because I knew I had billable hour requirements to meet. And for those of you who don't know, some firms do require you to hit a certain amount of hours every year. Um, so when you when you know you have a kind of target that you want to hit so you can make sure you know you're getting good reviews and stuff that can be very daunting okay so as a first year a lot of times your workflow is just kind of very up and down and not consistent and it can be very scary i know for me i was always like oh my god i'm not billing enough hours i don't have enough work this is so bad and you guys will get work in the beginning it might be a little slow but trust me, there will be an abundance of work, okay? It's a process, you will get work, you will be busy, don't worry about it. The next thing I would tell myself is the law firm is very entrepreneurial, okay? So what I mean by that is sometimes you have to be a self-starter. You have to put yourself out there to get work. If any of you guys have been in the summer program, you'll notice that you know people are always reaching out to you and looking for you and and you know trying to get to know you and giving you assignments and kind of hand holding you a little bit but once you get into the law firm once you're full-time working it won't always be like that so you'll have to kind of seek out your own opportunity sometimes i mean not to say that people won't be knocking on your door for assignments but you know if you get slow and you don't have anything to do no one's going to be you know hand holding you so you can't sit there totally your thumbs and you must kind of seek out that work and and be a go-getter for that work all right so the next one is most people aren't firm lifers um it is okay to switch around it's okay to lateral most people do it and you will not be seen as flaky so what i mean by firm lifers is you'll meet people who say oh i've worked here for 30 years or i worked here for my whole career and when i first started my career the firm that i started at i just knew that would be me and you guys the reality is in the legal field there's a lot of people who stay but there's a lot of people who don't you know a lot of people get opportunities that they can't pass up a lot of people start working at a firm that they don't like or that they you know aren't necessarily practicing the law they want to practice and so they move around and so that is okay and so i would tell myself that is okay it hasn't stopped anything for me people don't care you know so that's just one thing i would assure myself it's not a huge deal next thing i would tell myself is focus on your financial goals and don't try to live up to lawyer standards 
you guys been watching my channel, you already know I made some huge mistakes financially when I first graduated from law school. You know, I went from being a broke law student to, you know, a lawyer with a nice salary. So, you know, when I stepped into the law firm, everybody had nice jewelry, nice clothes, nice cars, and I felt kind of compelled to kind of live up to those standards. You know, I won't go into much detail in this video, but I did do a video about it a long time ago that I'll link up here. I guess I would say I was just trying to live this corporate girl, you know, lifestyle and, you know, black girl luxury lifestyle. And not to say there's anything wrong with that, but I had student loans, a good amount of them, law school and undergrad student loans. So it really just wasn't making sense financially for me to go out and make those types of purchases. And honestly, my mindset has changed so much when it comes to the things that I value and the things that matter to me. Again, there's nothing wrong with wanting nice things, but for me, my goals just aren't aligned with having a nice bag or the best car. That's just not where, where I'm going with life. Again, this one is a little bit more personal to me because those decisions that I made do not reflect, you know, how I feel about money, how I feel about finances today and where I'm trying to go in my life. So, yes. Okay, the next one I would say is, girl, no one cares about your LSAT score and your GPA once you get in the law firm. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, LSAT score was okay. Undergrad GPA was, if you guys have watched some of my videos, I've talked about this before, but my LSAT score was not the greatest. And I had a very average undergrad GPA. I did very well in law school, but I didn't go to like a top law school at all. And I think for, a little bit I was very insecure about that especially because some of the people that I worked with you know went to Harvard and I'm like oh wow you're way smarter than me but then I thought we're in the same place so you know so just that doesn't matter once you get in the practice your work ethic your, the good work you turn in the relationships you build is what matters once you get into the law firm so don't let any of those accolades you know get to your head or make you feel less than because it honestly doesn't matter oh my gosh the next one is take a vacation your first year oh my gosh i did not take a vacation my first year of practicing because i just honestly felt like i didn't deserve it i hadn't met my hours you know like i said i was looking to get work i just wasn't you know in my opinion meeting my full potential even though it was very much not a bad thing because you know it takes it's a process so i didn't take a vacation that was just really silly thinking i think the legal profession is a profession that you know there's always work to do you know if you let it this profession will take 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 so you have to take that time take that vacation and I've talked about this in a previous video of how that's something I still struggle with and I just want to let you guys know that I have taken a vacation this year so kudos to me okay so the next one is girl just be confident be confident um, I think for the early part of my career I walked around very meek and very thankful and very grateful which Again, I've said this before, I think humility is such a great thing. I think it's great to be humble, but not to the point where it's making you seem not confident. So I would just tell myself to be a lot more confident in myself and my abilities and just to remember how I got to where I got. Because just looking back, I was not as confident as I should have been. And I think it showed. And if you're not confident in yourself, how can you expect other people to be confident in you? Okay, so the next one is take legal research and writing classes more seriously because turns out you do need those skills for transactional law. So if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you guys know I'm team transactional all the way. Legal research and all those things are just not my jam. And while I say I don't write research memos or anything like that, for the most part in my practice, that kind of technical writing that you learn is a good skill to have and it's important for your practice across the board. Um, and it's crazy because LRW was always my lowest grade. Like I would get all A's in the main classes and then get a B plus <laughs> in LRW. So, or that's what they called it at my school, legal research and writing. So I probably would have took it a little bit more serious and worked a little bit harder in that class, you know, looking back. Oh, this is a good one. So I would have started paying off my student loans while in law school. So your grad school loans are accruing interest while you're in school, which is insane to me. We, you know, I'm not even gonna go down the student loan reform we need in this country. But I worked at large law firms both summers. I made a lot of money. What I should have been doing is paying off at least that interest that I was accruing, but I didn't. 
<laughs> so that's one thing that I would do differently. Again, my financial goals, the way I view money, the way I handle money, my mindset is totally different than it was back then. And so just looking back, I would have done things a lot differently. So my next tip would be don't be afraid to speak up. So for me, when I was, you know, just starting, I, if I had a thought or had opinion or I thought I caught something, I would be hesitant to say it to anybody who was more senior than me because I was like, well, of course they know more than me. I'm just a baby lawyer. But honestly, people do value your opinion. And as you get more experience, you will catch things. And you know, no one's perfect. So if you see something and you really think that you have a valid concern, then you can speak up. And even if you're wrong, it's a learning experience. So I would definitely tell myself to be a little bit more vocal. I think a lot of people like that and respect that. And you know, it, it shows that you are really taking an interest in learning and your development. Okay, so the next one would be, I would tell myself to practice delegating earlier. So coming into the firm, you get um, a legal assistant, you have all sorts of access to resources. But for me, when I first started the firm, I wasn't very busy. So I was like, well, I'll just do it myself. I'll just do these things myself. But at a point you do get busier and some of those tasks, honestly, you just should be delegating um, for the benefit of yourself and the benefit of the client. And so, I would have practiced doing that because then you get people used to you know you not using them and then it's like okay all of a sudden you know you want me to do these things and while it sounds very simple delegating is kind of a learned skill like it's not easy to tell people what to do or not for me at least especially when a lot of people you're delegating to such as your assistant or the support center are your elders i mean just given the way i was raised you know it's not natural for me to tell an older person what to do you know, especially back then, you know, I'm fresh out of law school, so I was super young. So that's something I would have practiced from day one. Next one I would tell myself is don't be so sensitive. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this. I don't know if it comes through on this channel. And I also don't know how I can do YouTube and be sensitive, but I can be a very sensitive person, okay? I'm very in tune with my emotions, sometimes too much. And so uh, I just don't know that that works well in the law firm setting, especially when you need to get feedback, you need constructive feedback and you need to be able to take things and internalize them without getting offended and really just be able to internalize it and do better. So I would just tell myself, girl, work is not the place to be sensitive. Okay, so the next thing I would tell myself is, you know, you can have your favorite partners or people that you work with as your work sources, but you definitely should have more than one stream of work. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of times people do leave, things change and you don't wanna have just one stream of work because if they leave the firm, then there goes all your work and you'll have to build back up your work source. So like I said, you can have your favorites, but you should have multiple streams of work sources within your law firm. Another one I would tell myself is be open to different types of work within your practice group. So for the most part, when you you know go to a firm, especially a mid-size to a large firm, you're gonna be in a certain practice group, you know? So you, like, I don't mean be open to litigation when you're a transactional lawyer but i mean for myself be open to venture capital work since i'm in a transactional group you know i say this because as many of you guys already know i started my career doing real estate and finance and now i'm an m a attorney and i like m a work way more than i like real estate finance work so just allowing myself to be open to things really opened up the doors for me to really be doing something that i really enjoy and so I would just say that and even now within my practice now, I'm still open to other types of transactional work. If someone asks me to do something or try out something, I always say yes because you just never know. So um, I would definitely tell myself to be open. Okay, so the next one I would tell myself is when you get an assignment, you know, as a very junior attorney, you will likely get very kind of non-substantive tasks such as checklists and, and things like that, right? And so it doesn't seem that important. But I would just tell myself to be mindful of the fact that this assignment is a part of a larger transaction. And so what I would tell myself is to understand the full picture, not just the assignment that you're doing, because guess what? At some point you're going to be doing those other documents that are a part of the larger transaction. You know, that those junior kind of minor tasks are not gonna last forever. And so the more you get acclimated with it, the more you understand the easier it'll be for you to transition into doing some more substantive work. So I definitely would have told myself, do not just laser focus on what you've been assigned, 
pay attention to what other people are doing and pay attention to the full picture of the transaction because it will help you later and you'll really be off to the races when you start doing more substantive type things. Okay guys, so I just have one more for you and the last one is to maintain your relationships with your colleagues. You guys, honestly, I've done a terrible job at staying in touch with a lot of my law school colleagues and uh, some people I used to work with at previous firms. and. I regret that, you know, I'm, I build some good relationships with people and in the legal field, it's all about relationships. So I would definitely tell my younger self, make sure you stay in touch with people. I can be one of those people that like, I'm thinking about you, I'm cool with you. I might not reach out to you, but if you reach out to me, like you, you're definitely gonna hear from me, but you, that's just not a good practice to have, especially professionally. You should definitely be mindful of making sure you're making those connections and maintaining those connections. So. That's definitely a big one that I would tell myself. So yeah, that's just some of the advice that I would give younger Angela. Um, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it all the way through, let me know in the comments which piece of advice you're gonna take heed to or which one that you can relate to. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn your post notification bell on so you get notified every single time I upload. Check out the description box for frequently asked questions. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.